Among the parts of this complex machine, the superconducting cable constitutes a real object of curiosity. Here's a life-size cross-section of the cable as it starts off. The 25 cm diameter, 80 cm long copper cylinder, inside which 9,000 hexagonal niobium-titanium bars have been placed. The cable is formed in successive stages. This is how the process works. The cylinder. Introduction of the bars. The first reduction thread. Action of the piston. The key will serve as a gauge to the size of the cable. Second thread. Third. Fourth. Finally, the finished cable measures no more than one square millimeter. Inside, the 9,000 bars have become 9,000 wires of just a few microns thick. This is a stripped cable and its 9,000 conductors. To make the definitive superconducting cable, 32 spools of 1 mm cable are required. A complex industrial machine is used to plait the cable, which is absolutely flat, the shape required by the industrial design of the magnets. Rigorous quality controls are indispensable to guarantee uniformity of production. Different treatments are applied to the cable before it's put into final operation. In the CERN laboratories, all manufacturing details have been studied and optimized in order to ensure perfect industrial production. In the assembly hall, a complete magnet with its tightening collars is placed in the yoke. Once assembled, the dipole will be introduced into a giant press, specially developed for CERN, in order to compress the elements and weld them. This press, which exerts a pressure of 900 tons per meter, has another function, slightly bending the dipole to give it a shape compatible with that of the circular tunnel. In reality, all stages of the LHC production have been studied and tested at CERN before mass production. Remember that this accelerator will be both the prototype and the only one of its kind in the world. Inside the dipole, the different parts of which it's composed always surprise people by their size, reminding them that it has to resist the force of 400 tons per meter. Each of the LHC's components has been designed and produced with these extreme conditions of use in mind. Particularly the tightening collars, which were designed using computer simulation techniques to determine the constraint zones and optimize their shape. strength, crack resistance, but also perfect tightness. Indeed, 700,000 litres of liquid helium will be injected into the machine and no leaks can be tolerated. Each dipole is 15 metres long. This means that problems at joints, in terms of both current and helium flow, had to be solved with extreme care. In fact, some 1,200 dipoles have to be interconnected in the tunnel. The continuous feeding of liquid helium has to occur all along the 27 kilometers of the machine's length. 
It necessitates giant cryogenic units to produce and conserve the cold with absolute guarantee of safety. The helium in gaseous form is stored in huge reservoirs, then compressed by powerful compressors. The liquid helium is produced by expanding the gas in large cold boxes before distributing it continuously to the magnets. The LHC, a machine full of contrasts, which combines the gigantic and microscopic, heat and cold. A machine which resembles in a way the very object of its research, linking the infinitely large with the infinitely small. An achievement which is the result of the union of talent and resources on a worldwide scale.